I'm gonna do two things in this video that I never thought I would do or never thought I would do again because I think they're stupid. The first is an unboxing. The second is listening to a record. Why unboxing? Because that's the, why do I think unboxing is stupid? It's, it's just the worst uh, YouTube trend, uh, maybe in, in all of the YouTube era. It's just stupid. Opening a box and showing people the contents of what's inside said box. Um, maybe maybe the other ones that are worse are uh, reaction videos. They're worse. I've never done a reaction video. I don't think I ever will. Um, although there was an earthquake five years ago and I literally, that was an actual reaction. But to say I'm going to do a reaction video, forget about it. Uh, reaction videos, what else is a really dumb uh, YouTube trend? Anything that's a, a challenge. The, the whatever challenge, the $100 challenge, how much food can I buy for $100 or things like that. So that's dumb, although I have done ha, a couple of these unboxings. Um, oh, and the other one is listen, listen to a record. Now, this one is going to be a little bit longer as, as uh, it tends to, as I have a tendency to do. Uh, now, I bought a record player and, and I'll show it right here. This is what I'm going to be unboxing momentarily or shortly or maybe longer than shortly. Um, but first I'm going to talk about vinyl or records or turntables or record player, record players, whatever you want to call them. Um, I, I guess people of a, of a certain age will remember that or remember a time when listening to music was a big deal. Uh, like it was, it was an actual event. I remember going to my friend's house different friends, different houses, or they would come to my house with the sole purpose of listening to records, listening to music. I don't think people do that anymore. Um, you know, no, no different than playing video games. You go to somebody's house to play video games or to watch a movie or to whatever. And uh, you'd go and, and listen to, to records, uh, listen to music. Um, now, I was born in 1969. So when I grew up as a kid in the 70s, Records, it wasn't, they weren't the sexy thing that they've become in the last 10 or 15 years. It was just a means to an end. You wanted to listen to music and you needed a format. So most people chose records or as people call it now, vinyl. Um, and I, I apologize if I sound condescending. It's not meant to be, although I, I kind of do feel that way. Um, there, there, was, there were cassettes. I guess those maybe came a little bit later, and eight tracks I've never ever owned an eight track ever in my life, but I always bought records, and um, that was how I listened to music, and how everybody listened to music. It was just it was just a fact of life. And then, as I said, fifteen, ten years ago, whatever, it started to become this big nostalgia thing. Younger people, and I know I realize this is making me sound like an old man, um, started really getting into vinyl. And there, then there was colored vinyl and splatter and everybody was buying all these different colors, uh, which I never really understood. And I was really, really the old man yelling at the clouds about this, about, um, you know, like, wh who cares what color it is? Are you going to sit there and watch it going rawr, 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 like, uh, um, like the, the sound that windmills make? You're not going to do that. You're going to listen to it, hopefully. And then there's the people that they buy records only so they can have them. They, they say they won't open it, they won't play it, they just want to keep it so it can increase in value, whatever. For me, records were meant to be played. And my friend Dwayne, Flaming Youth 75 on Instagram, if you want to follow him, he said the same thing. He, he buys a lot of Kiss records and he plays them. Uh, and I, so I had, I guess from the time I got my first record, which if you're paying attention, and I'm going to play it later, if I can ever finish talking, um, I'm going to play it later, Kiss Alive 1. Kiss Alive, Alive by Kiss. I got that in 1976, and from then until 1989, when I got my first CD player, I only bought records. And I guess, I, I think I was at around 200 by the time uh, I switched to CDs in 1989, and I got rid of my records some years later, maybe in the late 90s, early 2000s, I, I just... Uh, I think I sold them all in bulk to a record record shop or record store and never looked back. I was very, very happy. The thing that I don't understand about these so-called, people love to call themselves audiophiles, 
everybody loves to be an expert. And uh, these audiophiles, let's say records sound better. I guess I can't really argue with that, but I've been listening to music for a long, long time. And I've listened to music with headphones, good headphones, cheap headphones, good speakers, bad speakers, good stereos, bad stereos, everything. And I think I have a, a pretty discerning ear. And um, when I got my first CD player, I was so happy and all my friends, my music friends, we were all CDs, this is the way it is. No more skipping, uh, no more scratches, no more lifting the, the needle up or, or you know returning it or flipping it over. You could sit down, you could listen to the whole uh, album from, from beginning to end with perfect quality. You could bury CDs in mud for 100 years and they're still gonna play. They're much more portable and versatile. You could play them in your car, not at that point, but a few years later you could. So I and, and uh, my music friends, we spent years and a lot of money spending all the, the records, all, the, all the, the records that I had in my collection, the 200 or so, I spent years and many, many, many hundreds, maybe thousands, no, thousands, over a thousand anyway, dollars rebuying them on CD um, because they were much better. And I swore, I said goodbye to records a long, long time ago. I would never listen to them again. And if you've been watching, if you've been paying attention, I realized, God, this is getting long. I bought uh, records recently. I bought Kiss Alive in May. I was in Arizona in the United States. I bought it, a brand new one because I wanted the original booklet that came with it. I lost mine years and years ago. So I bought that. So I had then my original copy of Kiss Alive, my new copy of Kiss Alive. That was earlier this year. Then I was at, at, at El Chopo in Mexico City and I saw a Mexican edition of uh, Alive for a very cheap price. It was like 20 bucks US or something. And it was in very good condition. I thought, I'll buy one more. So I had three. I was in El Chopo a month or something ago and I saw a really cool, and I've done videos about all these things, a really cool, uh, um, it was called Casablanca Disco, a single that had Dirty Living and Christine 16 on the other side. Dirty Living was Mala Vida, translated to Spanish. Christine 16 was Cristina 16, translated to Spanish. And I bought those, but I still thought at this point, I'll, I, I'll never listen to these. Then a couple of weeks ago, I did a video of this talking about the originals, Kiss Originals. The, the first three albums uh, kind of in a, in a box set, although it wasn't a box, packaged together. And still, up until last week, I thought, oh, I'm happy just to have these on vinyl. I never play them. Something changed. I don't know what it was, but last week, out of nowhere, I thought, I, I want to listen to these. I want to buy... Now, another thing, talking about records versus vinyl, um, you can talk about turntables versus stereo. Now, this... Sorry, turntable versus record player. I think I bought a record player. To me, the difference is, and as far as I can remember, I've had three record players. They literally play records, so they're record players. I've had three in my life. I had a little, one of those little suitcase ones when I was six, seven, eight, nine years old, something like that. Um, you know, little tiny thing. That was okay for me. And then when I was maybe, I don't know, 10 or 11, maybe 12, I got kind of a decent, a better stereo, bigger one like this with a turntable, AM, FM radio, and it had a cassette player and cassette recorder. I got that at Beaver Lumber in Toronto. Yeah, I got it at a lumber store. And then um, maybe later in the 80s, maybe in 88, 89, I got another stereo, um, a better one. It was a double cassette and had a, a, a receiver, AM, FM, um, and that. So I've, as far as I remember, I've had three. My dad had a great stereo. And it's funny that used to, and I realize this is getting long and I'm getting off topic, but don't forget, I do have this to unbox and then I'm going to listen to something, I hope. Um, my dad in around 1980, 81, he spent a lot of money on a really, really nice stereo. One of those, uh, and again, people my age and maybe even a little bit younger would remember these. He, he bought the big stand and he bought everything separately. He had the turntable, which sat on top of the stand. Now, a turntable to me, a record player is these little suitcase ones and like what I bought. It plays records, that's about it. As opposed to a turntable, which is where you have to buy the components to go with it. My dad had a really, really nice Pioneer turntable in 80, 81, around there. He bought really, really big speakers. He had a nice uh, AM, FM, beautiful uh, dial and everything, nicely lit up. Had a nice big needle that, that went across like this. It was also digital. And it had a, a, a cassette that another component of it was, it was a cassette. My dad used to sit there on Sundays and listen to all these radio and tape them. And he was very methodical about writing everything down. He had all these uh, 
you know, the, the card saying that the artist and the song title, the tapes were all lettered, are all numbered. And we used to go to the flea market in Pickering beside Toronto and buy blank tapes, both of us, me and my dad. And, uh, but I, I never had a really, really good stereo. Now, out of nowhere, I wanted to buy this last week and I thought, shit, I gotta get, I wanna listen to these records that I got. And um, so I, I looked at Amazon and now turntables were, obviously they're gonna be better quality, but they're much more expensive. I think the cheapest one is about 200 bucks US and I wasn't willing to pay that. In addition, I would have also had to have bought speakers because you can't hear it without the speakers. Um, so that would have been, who knows how much to buy speakers. Plus I just don't have room to have a turntable and more speakers because as you'll see, if I ever finish talking, um, I have a stereo CD player stereo and speakers over here where this record player is going to go. Um, and I thought, it sounds strange to say this about music, but I don't really care that much about the quality. For me, this is purely about nostalgia. I just want to have that feeling again of, of putting a record on and lifting the needle and putting it on and listening to it. This one that I bought, which I will get to very shortly, it has two speakers on the side. The reason I bought this one, it's a, a Victrola brand. There were, there were two that I were looking at uh, that were around the same price. They were less than 100 bucks US, which is fairly expensive for me in Mexico. Um, they, the, the one, it, it, had, it, it had very few, and I don't really pay much attention to reviews, but it had very few reviews, and people said that the sound quality is not that good. I looked at this one, which was almost the same price, actually, I think it was even a little bit cheaper, this Victrola, which I'm about to show, and people said, great speakers for the price. Now, I'll probably, and it has a headphone jack too, which was a big thing for me, because I love listening to music with headphones. So I don't care too much about the, the built-in speakers. To me, it's more about the nostalgia, putting a record on and listening to the skips and pops and hisses and crack, crackles, all the things that I hated about records uh, through the, you know, up until I got a CD player in 1989. So uh, that's my history with records or with vinyl. And I've sworn to myself, and I know I'm gonna break this vow because I've already broken my vow that I would never listen to records or buy a record player again. I'm kind of restricting myself to I'm only gonna buy Kiss records and only old Kiss records, not, nothing past the original lineup, which is unmasked, and I know you're gonna say, but Peter Chris and Ace Frehley didn't plan it, or Peter Chris anyway, I know all that, believe me. For me, it's got the four of them on the cover, so that's, uh, that's Kiss. At least that's my idea, but I know I'm gonna end up buying, uh, you know, some other things too, hopefully only old records. Um, you know, new ones are four, five, six hundred pesos, which is way too much. But since I've been at El Chopo recently, looking at all the, all the old records, I've got, oh, that was cool. I had that when I was a kid. Or I, I had that and then I had it on CD. Or this one I didn't have. I only had it on vinyl. Never had it on CD. I did see one, but I think I would like to buy. So I might be breaking my vow about only buying Kiss records already. So I think next time I go to El Chopo, I'm going to be doing some serious um, looking at, at records. Uh, I, but I can't become one of those vinyl collectors, record people that you know fills their house with it. Kevin Montavon, Dwayne, I have so many friends who, who, who do this. Uh, I have to moderate myself. So I'm gonna open this now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it and then I'm gonna um, take it over here and get it set up and I'm gonna play Kiss Alive, the first record I ever got in 1976. I'm gonna try and play that. So here's, uh, this is kinda hard to do. My cat is here, as cats tend to do. So here it is. I don't know where. I didn't maybe didn't really think this through. Uh, I'll put it here. I've got my um, my my opener here. Uh, maybe I should stand up for this. And this is probably going to make the camera shaky as well. I'm trying to be careful. This is why I think unboxings are so stupid. Who, who's, who's watching this? Everybody's fast forwarding. All right, maybe, um, maybe I can do it like this in the chair. If my, if my cat can move. All right, I'll, uh, I'll use the chair here. All right, can the, can the camera pick this up? All 
All right, here it is. Here's the, the actual box. That was the Amazon shipping box. There's the, the box Victrola. It says the original revolution in sound. Now let me get this big one out of the way and open the, the Victrola. Ah, where do I open it? Let me see. Ah, you open it this way, I think. Why is this so hard to figure out how to open a box? You need some kind of a PhD in, uh, in engineering to open this box, I think. I could, I could just rip it open, but I don't want to do that. Who's, who's yelling at their, uh, at their YouTube screen right now? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this for a second and, and try to figure something out. Okay, I figured it out. I just had to very, very simple, easy problem to fix. Uh, I just had to message a few friends about how to open this box. I called uh, Amazon's customer service and asked how to open it. Um, looked, a, checked a few things on Google, and I did figure out. And what I have to do is I have to make one more cut of uh, along here. I shouldn't do this towards me. Always cut away. All right. I guess this is, this is, uh, I thought, well, I should just pause this until I get it open, but then it wouldn't be an unboxing. So this is, uh, this is why you're watching. All right, the box is now open. All right, there it is. So exciting to see the contents finally. Uh, can't believe that they still have these instruction manuals, paper instruction manuals, what a waste. So I will remove it. What was that? That was the, the cable that fell on the floor. My cat is gonna love all of this cardboard. Let me get the, the cable. So here's the, uh, uh, the power source, the instruction manual, and the record player. It's not sealed, let me open this. Desiccate. All right, there it is, that's how it looks. My little record player. I, I feel like a, a young Danny boy again. And oh, now you know what? I can, I can, uh, ha! This has got an output for, for speakers. So if I want, I could buy speakers. Um, now I did check these speakers when I was buying this last week when I was looking at re real turntables. I looked at what kind of connection it is for the stereo and the speakers I have here. It's not this kind. This is the, the traditional left and right uh red and re right left and right red and white connection uh auxiliary cable i guess that is um oh this is this is the antenna here this has got a radio too oh it does oh it has an fm radio only fm not, not am and there's the uh the headphone jack which i will be using a lot uh, let me remove this plastic from the, uh, I'll use the correct terminology. This is called a dust cover. I do know that. And the needle, as we used to call it all my life, apparently now everybody calls it a stylus. All right. So there's a, there's a, there's a better look at it open. And I don't know if anybody knows, this has a straight arm. I asked my friend Kevin Montavon, who is the authority on anything music, what the difference is between a straight arm and an S arm. And he, he said he didn't know. So if Kevin doesn't know, I don't know if anybody knows. Uh, it's, it's tied down, obviously. Um, oh, all right, it looks cool. These are the speakers are on the side. I believe this one they call right. And this one must be the left speaker. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go uh, 
I'm gonna go set it up over here where I've got my other stereo and um, I'm gonna play Kiss Alive coming up. All right, I have it set up and ready to play. There are a couple of things I don't like, not, a, not about the, uh, the, the unit itself, but a, a couple of things kind of about the unit. And I had to move my other stereo. This is my stereo CD player and speakers here. Two things that I don't like, and they're kind of related. I can't stand these type, these type of, or this type of uh, cord, because then it blocks this outlet um, and takes away, because I have things to plug in. I have a lamp, stereo, phone charger, um, and now the turntable and something else too. Oh, fan also. I have a fan. And I have my, uh, my kitty brush. That's separate. But uh, yeah, that really bugs me. I don't know if, if there's a purpose for that style of uh, connection. I don't know why they can't just make it like this. If there's a reason for it, okay. But if not, that's just stupid. The other thing is I can't stand short cables. Why don't they make this... 50 centimeters longer. So now uh, I'm going to have to, every time I, I listen to things, I'm going to have to move things around, which sucks. Um, but anyway, there it is. It's uh, This will be the first time turning it on. Oh, oh, it says hello. PH, I guess, is, is phonograph. We can We can do this right away. I'll, I'll, I'll for, to, to start, I'll, I'll start at half, just to see. Um, I, oh, there, I didn't, I didn't, uh, oh, yeah, it's on phono, so this should switch it to uh, FM. Well, no, to, to Bluetooth. And back to phono and FM. Hi. All right, I didn't, I didn't, uh, Set up the antenna. I didn't uh, attach the antenna. That's why it sounds funky. But uh... all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna spin the black circle. Well, just to continue with the uh, unboxing, I'll I'll do this. Oh, that doesn't go. Ah, okay. It, it holds its place like that. It doesn't go uh, to 90 degrees, but it does hold in place, which probably won't last for long. And I'll remove this. Uh, operation steps, plug in the unit, remove the tone arm rest holder, uplift the cue lever, that's, that's this thing here. Uh, select the speed, I, th I think this has, uh, what does it have? 33, I think just 33 and, and 45, so I can't listen to my old records from the, from the 20s, which kind of sucks, because they're 78. RPM. Uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll I'll figure this out. I'll uh, the record's coming up. Look what I got here. This is my original old. This has been documented many times on my channel here. This is my original copy of uh, Alive by Kiss that I got in 1976. Uh, I've had it ever since. It's old. It's beat up. It's in horrible condition. It's the first record I ever owned. First record I ever listened to. It hasn't been listened to since I got my CD player, as mentioned, in 1989, and I had this on, on CD shortly after that. So this probably hasn't been listened to since 1989, maybe 1990, and it was the record itself. You can see the, the, the sleeve, the, the jacket is all beat up, the, uh, the inside is all beat up, and the records are not any better. But what I'm about to do, this is historic for me, um, it looks not bad, but I, I'm going to listen to, and there's my name, Danny Delaney, that my sister wrote on it in 19, whatever, 76, I don't know. There it is, and I'm about to put this on, I'm about to relive a memory from 1976. Can you believe that? On my new turntable, no, my new record player. So I'm going to put this on here. Um... I guess I started. Oh, okay, it's working. I'm going to raise. Now, when I was a kid, you would just pick it up with your hand and place it on. But I'll do it properly. I'll raise the arm. And then I'll hover it like an angel. Over. This might sound really bad. I'll, I'll put the volume up halfway. 
And I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to drop the needle is what I'm going to do. I'm about to drop the needle. The needle is up very high. It, it's hard to, uh, to gauge if it's in the right position or not. All right, it's gently going down. Let's see. This could be disastrous. turn it down because YouTube will give me shit if I if I keep playing it. I'm very, very excited. Man, this is unbelievable. Obviously, I've listened to the, the music contained that was recorded many, many times over the, the last three decades or more. But this is the, the first time I've heard not just the record version of it, but my record of it from 1976. Um, Man, I, th I think I actually feel emotional. I'm not going to cry or anything, but man, I, I really, really feel this. This is, uh, this is really taking me back. This is really something. That's, uh, that's half volume there. I'll crank it up here. Uh, I, I don't know how much time I'm going to spend listening to it um, like this. I'll, I'll probably use uh, headphones. I have a couple of pairs of, I think, good headphones. Um, maybe maybe at first, and I think I know what I'm going to do the rest of the day. I might just listen to it like this through these shitty built-in speakers. And it sounds bad because it's, it's an old record too. But uh, this might be the rest of my afternoon. Well, that's that. All that, all that talking, all that long introduction, the stupid unboxing. Uh, maybe not for you, but for me, this was well worth it. I only, only listened to the first, uh, you know, minute, minute and a half of Deuce. That's all I needed. If I threw this in the garbage right now, if there was an earthquake, which there could be at any moment, living here, uh, and this was destroyed and I lost it, I'd be very happy that I got to hear that music again. As I said, that, that, was, that made me feel very emotional, very excited. There's no way my plan for the rest of the day was, was to go back to work. I don't think I can. I'm, I'm too excited. I want to listen to it. Now, I think I'll listen to the full album alive. Not this version, but um, a version that's not scratched. Probably not the new one either. I want to keep that unplayed. But I, I will listen to, uh, since I have three versions to choose from, Canadian 1976, um, American reissue from 2014, which has never been played. And uh, the Mexican, I think I'll listen to the Mexican version. Um, but very, very exciting. A couple of things that I, um, that I didn't, that I didn't like. I, I mentioned the cord, the cable, but that's, I guess it's, it's not a big deal. But I'm, uh, and if, if the vinyl experts or, or audio files, if anybody, if you want to comment about how this, this record player sucks, I know. I know this is not a top of the line. This is not a, um, an audiophile's wet dream. It's my personal wet dream, which by the way, I have to go uh, clean up in, in the bathroom after I finish this video. Um, it has built-in speakers. I understand all that. Don't rain on my parade. Don't shit on me. I'm very excited. There's no need to be, to be negative, to, to bring people down. I'm very, very excited to listen to my little uh, Victrola record player and my Kiss records. And I, I think my cat is very happy too. She's, uh, she's here watching the proceedings. So this, this is how I spent my, my uh, not my day, but my afternoon. Um, I feel like there's something, I, something else I should say, but uh, I've talked long enough. I don't know how long this video is, but probably longer than I had intended. And that's it. So my afternoon begins right now with Kiss Alive on a Victrola record player.